What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to download and install Paper 1.19 to host a server for you and your friends. It's super simple, completely free to do, and as long as you have a relatively powerful computer, you can keep your server up 24 seven with lots of people and it's pretty smooth. So to begin in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Paper MC website. On this website over here, currently they have a bunch of red text saying these are early and may have issues, but these blue ones up here are pretty much fine. At the time of you clicking this in the future, more than likely everything will be blue here. We're simply looking for Paper 1.19, the latest releases of this server. On this page, all you need to do is click the one at the very top of the list here. For me, it's number 8, 1.19, and it's downloading to my computer. Paper 1.19, 8.jar. All we have to do now is find a place to put it. I'll make its home on my desktop in a new folder called Paper 1.19. I'll drag and drop the jar in here, and there we go. We're practically ready to set up our server. If you already have a run.bat, congratulations, you're pretty much done. For those who don't know what run.bat is, at the very top of your browser, on Windows 11, click View, then hover over Show, and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, click View at the very top, then find hidden items and file name extensions, and make sure that both of them are ticked as well. Then you should see paper blah 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 dot jar. We'll right click, New, Text Document, and I'll be renaming it, getting rid of .txt as well. I'll call it, say, run.bat. When you hit enter or click anywhere else, you'll see a pop-up like this on your screen. And if you do, congratulations, we've changed it from a text file to a bat file. And upon clicking yes, the icon changes as well. This is now an executable file. I'll right-click it and choose edit. And inside of here, we'll be typing in some commands to set up our server. For the most part, this is very simple. I'll type at echo space off. And in the description down below, you'll find this code to copy and paste in. Java hyphen XMX 4G. That means a maximum of four gigabytes of RAM on our server. We'll get back there in just a moment. Space hyphen jar space followed by the jar's name, which in my case is paper 119 8.jar. If you update the jar file, you'll need to update this here, or you can simply rename the jar to be paper.jar and rename the file inside of your folder here. When these two match, we can continue. I'll add space hyphen no GUI, as I don't like that big white window with the graph and it pops up. Then on the next line, pause. In case it crashes, we'll see the error before the window disappears. Awesome. I'll save the file. And now let's talk about giving your RAM more server. It's defaulting to four gigabytes of maximum RAM, which is good for most people. If you'd like to give it more, no stress. And if you need to give it less, no stress as well. To find out how much RAM you can give your server, hold Control Shift and press Escape to open up your Windows Task Manager. Mine looks a bit different as I'm on Windows 11, but essentially head across to the Graphs tab, wherever that may be for you, and to the Memory section as well. Essentially, we're looking for the available or free RAM on our computer, and we're able to give Minecraft pretty much all of it, though you don't want to do that. Essentially, Windows is using some, as well as the programs running on it, but you like to keep some headroom for using a browser, playing the actual game itself, etc. And whatever you're left with after that estimation, we can give to the server, though do keep a couple of hundred megs to a gig of free RAM, just for everything to run smoothly in the background and nothing to run out of RAM, because that's when crashes happen. For example, if you have 16 gigs of RAM and Windows plus the normal Minecraft game uses six, that leaves us with 10 gigs of free RAM on our computer. Essentially, I would be comfortable giving about eight of them, leaving two for anything extra like web browsing, etc., and eight to give to our server. So give it as much as possible while still leaving yourself some headroom. That being said, because I have a ludicrous amount of RAM, I'll enter eight in here, save, and close our .bat file. Now, all we need to do is run the run.bat file. A black window will pop up and this will start downloading some files and extracting files into the folder here. That's why I recommend moving this to its own folder. As you can see, I currently have Java 17 installed, but if when you run this command, things don't work properly, in the description down below, you'll find a guide for Jarfix, which is something that can help you with this issue. On top of this, you'll also need Java 17 downloaded and installed. You'll also find a guide for that linked down below. As you can see, we need to accept the EULA, so I'll press any key to close it. I'll open EULA.txt and I'll change it from false to true. Save, close, and run run.bat once more. Of course, we can customize server.properties, etc. just before we run our server, but for me, I'm comfortable leaving it as vanilla, just as an example. 
In the background, I'll fire up Minecraft so I can join my own server and show you what it looks like. While that's starting up, let's talk about installing plugins. To install plugins, simply open the plugins folder here, drop the jar files that you download from different plugins websites into here, and once we run our server or use a plugin manager to refresh our plugins, you'll see configs appear in the config folder that we can then customize. Awesome. So we have our paper server running, let's go ahead and join it. So I'll tap into Minecraft 1.19, head across to multiplayer, direct connection, and in here I'll type in 127.0.0.1. You can also add your server, this is essentially localhost. If you're running it on the same computer that you're playing the game on, you'll be able to join your server, and as you can see, Techno has joined the game. There we go, we're now on my own Minecraft server. So I'll simply tab out and type in OP Techno to give myself operator, heading back to Minecraft and running slash game mode creative. You can see now I'm in creative mode, flying around, things are good. Awesome. So how exactly do we get friends to join our server and things like that? Let's talk about the firewall. This allows people to connect locally through the same network connection, or of course over the internet, assuming you've done port forwarding. Though no, we'll get to that later. Essentially, you'll need to open up the Windows firewall where we'll go ahead and add exceptions for our server to allow people to join our server on our computer unconditionally. If you're using a third-party antivirus with a firewall or third-party firewall software, you'll need to look up a guide on how to use that. But for me, I'll simply open up the Windows firewall. I'll hit start, type in firewall, and I'll open Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. If you don't see this and instead a settings window pops up, on the left hand side you should see an advanced button that'll take you to the screen here. Awesome, now that we're here, you can see that I'm using a third party antivirus firewall, so I'll need to do it through them, but I'll still do it here just to give you an example. To begin, head across to inbound rules on the left hand side, then on the right hand side click new rule here, and we'll be entering some info in here. So I'll select port next, 25565, and I'll copy this as we'll be entering this another three times. Next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, and I'll give it the name, say, MC 1.19, finish. Now I'll click it again, this time I'll select port, next, UDP, paste in the 25565, next, allow, next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19. Now I'll go across to outbound rules on the left hand side, once again new rule, and port next TCP 25565, next allow, next all three, next MC 1.19. Then new rule, port next UDP, paste next, allow, next all three, next MC 1.19, finish. And congratulations, we're done with the firewall. People on the same local network connection, as in Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection, will be able to join your server and play with you. But what about people over the internet? Well, essentially, you'll need to port forward 25565 to your computer. In the description down below, you'll find a complete guide for port forwarding to your computer, and it's relatively simple. Hold down Start and press R to bring up the Run dialog, type in CMD and hit Enter. I'll then enter IP config, hit enter once more, and look for the way that I'm connected to the internet. For me, it's Ethernet adapter, Ethernet, and as you can see, IPv4 192.168.1.20. This is the address that friends on the same local network will use to connect to me, and for port forwarding, I'll port forward 25565 on my router to this address here. Note that if you're using multiple routers, as in your PC, a wireless router, another router, and then to the internet, you'll need to follow the multi-router port forwarding guide in the description down below. Essentially, you'll forward your last router, the one that connects you to the internet, to the next one down the chain, to the next, all the way down port forwarding to your computer. So there's a direct line between you and the internet, allowing people over the internet to connect and play on your Minecraft Paper 1.19 server. And with that comes the end of this video. To save your server, type save hyphen all and hit enter. Then to stop it, type stop and hit enter. Our server will then save once more and close out. Press any key to stop it. And now the server is shut down and not taking up any of your resources, though none of your friends can join either. You need to run run.bat in order for anyone to play on your server as you're hosting it locally on your own computer. Because you're using your electricity and your own resources, it's completely free. You just have to have your PC on and the server running for people to connect and play on your Minecraft Paper 1.19 world. Anyways, in the description down below, you'll find a ton of Minecraft 119 guides and related guides, 
Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.